Welcome to July 15, 2015 safety meeting. My name is Fernando Molinado. I'm your human resources generalist and I'll be guiding you through today's webinar. Unfortunately, if you uh, had actually joined earlier today, you noticed that we were unable to connect via audio. So this is the reason why we're recording it and uh, you have the option here to listen to the safety meeting and also complete the quiz that will be uh, provided on our Sunrise University or Grace Hill portal. So after you complete the safety meeting, which shouldn't take long, about 20 to 25 minutes, you'll be able to answer some of the questions that are, will be available to you on that quiz on Sunrise University. So to get started, just a little picture of myself. If you've never met me, especially for our team members in Nevada or Arizona, this is what I look like right there. That mustache is a work in progress, so I'm still undecided about that. If uh, you guys want to provide me some feedback, you're welcome to email me, and I will make a decision then. So maybe next time you see me, I will be clean shaved. Maybe I'll have a bigger mustache, so who knows. In any case, I am your HR generalist, and if you need anything from... Um, leaves of absences to any concerns about safety or you have any questions regarding our policy, uh, you can always contact me uh, at any time and that information is available on our Sunrise web portal. But moving forward today, what we're going to talk about is obviously safety. But here in our agenda, we're going to talk about our culture or basically our culture of safety. We're going to talk about June safety quiz winners, and just a hint, there was no quiz, so there will be no winners, but there will be one for July, so you'll have an opportunity of winning cool prizes there. I'm also going to provide you with an injury update for the month of June, and I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about injuries that we've sustained since then, so a couple of them, I believe, for July. Um, we're going to talk to you about um, what you should do if you are ever injured on the job. This is specifically particular for people that, or some of our team members that have joined us here recently, and that should be aware of what to do in the event that they are injured. We're also going to talk about our monthly topic. Usually what we have at this section is something specific, something like ladder safety, or how to properly lift something, or right, using the right uh, protective equipment. This time around, we're going to be a little bit more general. Uh, I'm taking the opportunity for the fact that Dustin Peak will not be joining on this webinar to just kind of talk big picture about safety, about our culture, and kind of create awareness all throughout. First, we're going to talk about our Sunrise culture of safety here. If you follow along, you'll see that team members should be informed of safety initiatives. They should uh, participate on these monthly safety meetings for all regions. And you should look at our safety corner topics that are available on our Sunrise uh, intranet or our Sunrise web portal. You'll see there an option to read plenty of information to help you uh, stay aware of safety issues how to, and how to better do your job and identify safety risks. Webinars are made available through Sunrise University. This webinar will be available to you fairly soon. Um, so stay tuned and make sure you check your Sunrise University account to make sure that you actually listen to the webinar and complete the safety quiz. That leads to the monthly quiz. Make sure you do that in a timely manner. I'm usually allowing 48 hours to complete the quiz. I'll prolong this. I'll give people 72 hours just because of the technical, technical difficulties that we experienced here earlier today. And I also want to invite you to look at our internet. Like I said, there's tons of resources there in regards to safety and also at the property level. June safety quiz. Unfortunately, there were no winners because there was no safety quiz. I apologize. We dropped the ball on that one. But we'll give you an opportunity here for July to complete the quiz. That way you can earn some cool prices. For the injury update, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but we had two accidents in the month of June, and we also had one accident in the month of July, actually at the very, very start of July. Some of the trends that we're seeing is uh, issues with lifting, not using proper procedure there. 
body positioning. So somebody being uh, reaching for an extended period of time or laying down for an uh, extended period of time and having to get up quickly, uh, basically not staying aware that moving your body uh, from one position to another, especially if you've been uh, kind of in a prolonged sitting position or standing position, um, that you should be aware to kind of do it slowly and do more of a transition than, than do it fervorously. We also have the Another issue, which is just general safety awareness. Whenever you're doing your, your job or you're doing a work order or you're carrying out any sort of activity at work, uh, there seems to be a trend not to think about safety first, not to see uh, what the safety risks are. And what we want to do is particularly increase our awareness of safety on a day-to-day -day basis. If you are injured on the job, if it's a limb, threatening or life-threatening, please call 911. We can always figure out the paperwork afterwards. You also want to notify your direct supervisor as soon as you can. You want to call Human Resources Department. And the reason you want to do this is not only so we're aware, but so we can authorize your visit to the, uh, whether it's the emergency room or urgent care facility. We're also a wonderful resource to help you determine uh, whether you need attention or care. So make sure you reach out to us. That way we can help you through the process. Uh, once you are injured, make sure that a team member um, provides you information to the closest urgent care facility. Um, if you are able to take yourself, you should. If not, we can always have one of our team members do it for you. Obviously, in the event of an emergency, you're going to call 911 and they'll dispatch an ambulance for you. Once you do visit the nearest urgent care facility, what you want to do is provide us with all paperwork and copies of your visit from your medical providers to our human resources department. And the reason you want to do this is so we can you know, keep track and make sure that you are receiving the proper care. Once again, you want to notify human resources of all continuing doctors and therapy appointments. That is, if you are checked out and you're going to uh, need to go through a follow-up appointment to be cleared, uh, just make sure you let us know and they provide us additional paperwork that comes from that. Also, you want to communicate, you want to participate, you want to be as interactive as possible with your regional manager um, or if you have a safety compliance officer to determine what really caused the injury and how maybe we can avoid uh, similar injuries in the future. If you are injured, uh, how should you report the injury or should you report an injury? And this is regardless of whether you go through workers' compensation or you go to the doctor or not. So if you are ever injured, whether it's something as small as a paper cut or something as big as like breaking a leg, uh, always, always contact us um, and we'll let you know if you actually it is necessary for you to visit, visit a doctor. But just let us know. We want to document all injuries. Uh, our concern is not just workers' compensation injuries. It's injuries all throughout. We want to make sure that all of our team members understand that safety does come first. Um, and by reporting all uh, any injury that you might sustain or that a team member might sustain, we will be able to identify trends and make sure that these injuries don't happen or they don't escalate. Supervisors, make sure that you are notifying human resources. Again, we are your number one resource. We can uh, guide you through the process if we need to take the team member to uh, urgent care, if we need to process anything through workers' comp. Um, but regardless, make sure you reach out to us if you have any questions, concerns, or if uh, a team member has reported an injury to you. If it is after hours, please make sure you call, leave us a message, and then if you deem necessary, seek treatment. If team member is self-modifying, and all self-modifying means is that you're changing your behavior um, based on the responsibilities that you have to do at work, um, then make sure that you go see a doctor. That's a pretty good standard uh, to kind of make sure that, that a team member is getting the proper care. If they are having to limp, um, if they're kind of modifying their behavior and not lifting a certain amount of items, or if they're kind of slouching, that was, those will all be indications that maybe perhaps they need to be seen by a doctor. Now, moving on to our safety topic, how do we prevent injury? I'm going to take you through a brief list 
Um, and some of these are going to be on the safety quiz. So make sure you maybe jot them down as we go along. It'll kind of help you get that 100%. Um, the first and foremost, and something that we've seen that maybe not everybody's been keeping up with, is always being alert on the job. And what we mean by that is identifying how your day-to-day -day is going to be affected uh, with the umbrella of safety. So if something that you're going to do potentially puts you in harm's way, you always want to be alert. You always want to stay on your tippy toes. Make sure that you know exactly uh, what's coming your way. That way you can anticipate it. Um, also make sure that you wear the required uniform. And that comes down to also wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment. If you're doing a particular type of job or if you're doing something specific, make sure that you're wearing the appropriate uniform and the protective equipment that's necessary. And that's aside whether something needs to be uh, done promptly or whether you need to do something really fast or whether you have tons of work orders to work out through. Um, even if the expectations are really high, please take the time, take the moment to wear the proper gloves, put on the proper mask, wear a helmet if you need. Uh, if you need to change your shoes to steel toe shoes or even something as simple as uh, using the appropriate uh, uniform, you know, not wearing shorts, if you're going to be doing any lifting or anything like that. Three, always ask your supervisor about possible risk of doing a certain task, especially if you are lifting or if you're by yourself and doing something that might be potentially risky. Make sure you stop all activities. Don't worry about completing the task. Just worry about communicating the possible risks of what you're about to do to your supervisor. And have them help you determine whether what you're going to do um, is worth the risk. We can always get an extra person. The last thing that we want is for you to be injured or have to go to the doctor and then have to deal with um, having to be out of work and, and all the implications that, that comes from that. Also, never take a high-risk job for which you have not been trained for. I know many of you, especially that have started with us, are looking to you know prove your prove yourselves, and maybe even our our veterans are just looking to kind of maintain that image that they're all knowing and and they can do whatever we put in front of them. Uh, sometimes our supervisors don't quite remember what each individual has been trained on, but if you haven't been trained on something, make sure you seek training first and foremost. That'll make sure that you know how to do the job, but also how to do it safely. Always follow the safety program of your workplace. And this has to go back to you know that point that we just made. If you are properly trained, you're going to be aware of the safety protocol. And when you are working, whether it's outdoors or indoors, uh, working out a uh, uh, movel uh, or uh, something else, you're going to have the ability to follow that safety protocol. Um, so if you ever are unsure of what you should do, how to do it, please seek the appropriate training. Always be on the lookout for possible causes of accidents uh, and make sure you report this to management, whether it's your supervisor or whether it's your regional manager. Make sure that when you are working uh, on completing a certain task that you're looking at potential risks, maybe things that are sticking out, maybe uh, something that looks kind of dangerous, um, make sure that, that you report these things to your manager, your supervisor, or your regional manager. That way we can address it, whether it's uh, giving you the appropriate equipment, the appropriate uniform, maybe changing your work environment that, so it's much, much safer. Also, we want to encourage each property to form a safety team or have a safety officer. Somebody that's there at the property, or maybe a group of individuals at the property that can promote safety, that can really talk about and uphold the value of safety. Um, if you are in a roving position, then you might want to talk to your regional manager about you becoming that safety officer, maybe also providing information for all the properties, all the community managers, or resident managers that you might be reporting to, uh, so they're aware of all the safety issues that could be in different properties. So for my uh, maintenance techs, my individuals here that are roving, 
um, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, um, have a safety team. It just means that you might become that safety officer. And this is very important. Make sure you never risk the health and the safety of another employee. Um, and this includes yourself. Profit is never a good enough reason for you to put yourself in harm's way. We can always make something work, but safety comes first. Make sure that you are looking out for yourself, for your health, for your safety first and foremost, and not after the fact, not after you become injured, not after you did something risky. Um, make sure you're looking out for your fellow team member. If you notice anything that can be a safety concern, make sure to report that to your community manager or your regional manager. Again, it is a priority of ours to maintain safety as a standard, not as something that, you know, comes and goes. So once again, make sure that you keep the health and safety of your fellow team member and yourself um, as top priority. And here, if this was uh, a webinar, you would have the option of giving me some questions, having some comments, maybe even having an open discussion. Given the nature of the topic, the fact that it's so broad, I would have loved if uh, I could have heard uh, any questions, comments, or even just hold an open discussion. Unfortunately, because it's a recording, you won't have that option. But please feel free to email me or give me a call if you have any questions. Again, if you have any comments or if you want to uh, have a discussion about safety and have any ideas to, to provide me. Uh, you can totally do that at any time. Give me a call. Shoot me an email. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you about safety today. Uh, Dustin Peake should be joining us next next month for our safety webinar. If he does not, then um, we'll just go ahead and, uh, and introduce another safety topic here, and hopefully next time we'll have an opportunity to hear your questions, comments, or any sort of discussion that you might want to have. Again, I thank you for joining us. I apologize for the inconvenience earlier, and uh, we'll post that safety quiz for you to complete. Uh, thank you very much uh, from San Diego. I wish you guys a safe and healthy workplace and work environment. Thank you.